In the episode Day of the Moon of the hit science fiction television show, Doctor Who, the 11th Doctor claimed, the human race will spread out among the stars. You watch them fly, billions and billions of them, for billions and billions of years. And every single one of them, at some point in their lives, look back at this man taking that very first step, and they will never, ever forget it. The Doctor was, of course, referring to the 1969 moon landing. And this really illustrated how the things we hear, read, and watch all impact our decisions. Because up until that point, Space travel is considered to be merely science fiction, the fantasy of authors like Jules Verne and Isaac Asimov. However, thanks to the work of hundreds of dedicated people, it became a reality in 1969. But science fiction stories about the moon surfaced as early as 79 BCE in ancient Greek myths, and they continued throughout all the major eras of history, from ancient Greece to medieval Europe, through the Enlightenment, and into modern literature. Though science fiction is still fiction, it contains realistic elements that inspire, inspire people to make the impossible a reality. Through the years, science fiction has grown in popularity. It is something a majority of people have been exposed to and a large number of people enjoy. Now, the doctor had it right when he claimed we would never forget the moon landing. It was such a monumental achievement that people all around the world heard about it. Imagine, for the first time ever, people are walking around on a little rock more than 200,000 miles away. This event sparked a wave of interest that created a generation passionate about space exploration. It created, it gave way to a whole culture of space-inspired entertainment, from movies and TV to books and toys. This culture was key to motivating the budding young scientists of the time. In a paper about the impact of science fiction on our generation, Ann Nauman, a professor of educational foundations, stated, A science fiction novel or story may pique a child's interest and turn his or her attention in a new direction. What better way to learn about astronomy than by flying around the planets in a spaceship? Science fiction has been mainly looked at as a means of entertainment, but now it's time we view it as it should be, a key to inspiring the future innovators of the world. Now most of us, when you hear the phrase science fiction, you probably imagine some stereotypical movie in which a mad scientist unleashes an entire race of alien invaders upon the world and the hero or heroine has to go and save the world single-handedly to emerge victorious. However, the diversity of science fiction has come a long way since the days of Wells' 1898 War of the Worlds. Make no mistake, science fiction still contains many of far-fetched alien crusades. But as mankind has become more scientifically advanced, so have the stories. As Nauman puts it, the science fiction writer must do more than simply speculate about the future. He or she must be able to be, must be knowledgeable in the principles and practices of science and technology and be able to construct on paper a new world whose advances are based on scientific fact. Now, for most of us, when we go to the movies, you don't walk in there thinking, oh boy, I hope I learn how to invent, insert currently fictional invention here. If you're like me, you're probably just going to see a movie. But think about this, though. Have you ever gone to see a superhero movie in which a ragtag band of heroes saves the entire world and then left the theater wishing you could do the same thing? It's the same basic principle. In The Martian, a popular novel and movie by Andy Weir, astronaut Mark Watney is stranded on Mars during a not too far-fetched Mars landing mission. Weir's book is founded on scientific fact and closely resembles what an actual Mars mission might look like. However, as Weir puts it, all the technology in the book exists, it's just that the book versions are the more effective or the more efficient versions of that technology. And The Martian is a great example of what a Mars landing mission might look like in real life. And the science fiction could break through, or the science could break through the fiction sooner than you think. According to their website, NASA is developing the capabilities needed to send humans to Mars as soon as the 2030s. During an interview, Weir talked a lot about how science in fiction influenced him, saying, I loved classic sci-fi as a child. Heinlein, Clark, and Asimov. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably say I, Robot. Weir is a great example of someone who is inspired by science fiction and in turn paid it forward, so to speak, by writing to inspire further generations. In fact, many of the technological impossibilities of the past have been brought to life thanks to science fiction. And we have men like Amit Singhal to thank for that. As a young boy in India, Amit was inspired by the world of science fiction as well. He said, those are my favorite times as a child, sitting in my room on a hot summer day in India watching Star Trek. Singhal would eventually grow up to be one of the leading engineers of Google's voice recognition program, a passion to, he attributes to his love of Star Trek, particularly the way they vocally ask the computer questions and it provides answers. Singhal says that the sci-fi show really piqued his interest in technology. Library computer. History files. Subject, former Governor Cotus of Tarsus IV, also known as Cotus the Executioner. 
After that, background on actor Anton Caridian. Working. Kodos the Executioner. Summary. Governor of Tarsus IV, 20 Earth years ago. Invoked martial law. Slaughtered 50% of population Earth colony that planet. Burned body found when Earth forces arrived. No positive identification. Case closed. Now that sounds awfully familiar, so let's try this. Raise your hand if you own a smartphone. So that's most of the people. Now raise your hand if you've ever used Google on your smartphone. Yes. So Amit later went on, as Abby said, to become one of the leading engineers for Google's voice recognition program. And thanks to the inspiration that Star Trek gave him, more than 20 million teens can pick up their phones and ask Google a question every single day. A surprising number of honored inventions can be traced back to science fiction authors. For example, Simon Lake, the inventor of the submarine, gathered his inspiration from one of Jules Verne's most famous novels, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, in which a crew of explorers were taken aboard a great submarine ship that was completely unheard of at the time. Lake then created his first experimental submarine, the Argonaut Junior. Without the invention of the submarine, we wouldn't be able to reach the deep depths of the sea like Verne dreamed in his novel. In fact, a number of famous inventions have been inspired by Verne's novels. Take Igor Sikorsky, for example. He was inspired by one of Verne's lesser known books, The Clipper of the Clouds, and he later went on to invent the world's first helicopter. These men are great examples of people who found inspiration in another's work. And as Verne famously said, anything one man can imagine, another can make real. The science fiction culture of the past paved the way for today's great inventions, many of which were thought impossible. Just as the past paved the way for today, so today science fiction inspires the future innovators. As Nauman states, the genre may provide, for children and adults alike, a window on the future, a means of predicting how life might be at some future date. The study of history shows us how the events in the past have affected the present. Science fiction gives us an idea of how the decisions we make now may affect our lives in the future. Now imagine how incredible some of today's commonplace inventions would be to our ancestors. Giant hunks of metal that can fly all around the world in just under a day. Tiny robots that can go to the deepest depths of the sea and take pictures of exotic, sea, of exotic life forms. And rockets that can carry people farther away from Earth than anyone has ever before gone. It is incredibly critical that a generation rises up with not just the ability, but the motivation to fix the world's problems. Debt, conflict, pollution, etc. As science fiction author Neil Stephenson wrote, Speaking broadly, the techno-optimism of the golden age of science fiction has given way to fiction written in a darker, more skeptical, and ambiguous tone. The darker future has begun to replace the shining future once seen in fi science fiction writings of old. Back then, science fiction writers dreamed of unattainable adventures, rockets to the moon, time travel, and living robots. However, today's science fiction is notably less ambitious, so we challenge you, don't forget to dream. Imagine the impossibles, time travel, teleportation, and yes, colonies on Mars. While the little innovations of today are undeniably important, we must be careful to work toward a greater mission. It was no wonder that some of humanity's greatest achievements fell during the so-called golden age of science fiction. It was an era of big dreams and even bigger successes. So let us go. Read sci-fi novels, watch sci-fi movies, and above all, dream. Go, and let us be a generation inspired. Thank you. Thank you.